Hey everyone, this is Alicia Costanzo and welcome back to my channel. We're just going to go straight into the vlog. There's not a lot of vloggy bits, but there's a lot of me talking about books. I read a lot of books this week. And I have some plans for NaNoWriMo, which is at the end of this video, so please stay tuned for that if you're interested in knowing what the hell I'm going to do for NaNo. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I finished Thirst, the first book in Thirst Volume 2. I finished Phantom, Christopher Pike. Book 4 in the Last Vampire series, the Thirst series, whatever you want to call it. Originally, it was the Last Vampire series for me. Now, I said I didn't remember most of it, and I, this is what that was still true at the end of the book. And he got me. He got me again. Okay. Yes. I am currently editing Alex Timothy's survive the streets i did survive the city which was book two i'm now editing book one i know it's backwards it's fine even having read book two i am so fucking invested in this story like fucking love gabriel so much and maybe it's because i know what he's like in book two but oh my god just just oh my god just oh my god I don't often get to edit books that I'm just like, I need to, I would read this anyways. So I'm very excited and I'm very happy. And my friend Alex has done an excellent, excellent fucking job with this story. If you haven't read it yet, you should totally get the series. Seriously. Seriously. The, the cliffhanger. Alex, Timothy, the cliffhanger. And I know what happens, but still. <sighs> Once again, finally, Betty Ann time. So real quick, as I get ready to go see Betty Ann again, because we're gonna have a lunch day and do some more writing to catch up on all the shit we didn't do when I was in New York. Although I did like chat with her twice while I was in New York, you know, on, on video, video phone. Anyways, I finished reading The Beekeeper's Apprentice yesterday and I have predictions. I know there is a big age discrepancy between the two of them. However, I get romantic vibes and I don't know if that's just me shipping them or what, but I definitely get romantic vibes. And um, I have book two, I have book two on hold. And then I started Gallant, V. Schwab, like happy, happy, joy, joy. I'm gonna put that on now and I'm gonna go drive because I'm not gonna talk to you and drive. Okay, I just binge read, I don't even know what the name of it, Love on the Brain, Ellie Hazelwood. Second book of Ellie Hazelwood's that I've read. I damn near binged the first one, which if you don't know, was Love Hypothesis. And uh, y'all, that was a good book. It made me feel good. I liked the banter. Oh my God, with the misunderstandings. Coming to find that I liked the trope <laughs> of the guy being in love with her and the girl just not understanding any of it until like they're already been sleeping together for a while anyways i essentially just wanted to come on and tell you that i just sat here i started the book this morning i just finished it i have an hour of work left <laughs> and it was fantastic oh it was fantastic finally a boy not named josh so Really excited about that. I also, by the way, over the last couple of days, read Gallant, which was beautifully dark. And she's got this like musical language that she uses that is just fantastic. And I love her characters and I love the world and I loved death and the ghouls in her family history and how it played out and the ending. And it's just like, it's a V.E. Schwab book. So of course, of course I fucking loved it. Are you kidding me? How can I not love V.E. Schwab book? Even the one, that like wasn't my favorite was still like a four, 4.5. Like you can't, you can't not like V.E. Schwab, but if you can, there's something wrong with you. And I'm sorry if that's you, but obviously like, what are you doing with your life if you don't love V.E. Schwab? <sighs> so two five-star books in a row, which makes me really, really happy. I'm slightly worried for the next one that I read, which I don't know what it is. What else? 
I think I've had a lot of good, have I had a lot of good reads this month? I know I reread two of my favorites this month because birthday month, um, and I read them both on my birthday. Oh yeah, that one was really good too. So Beekeeper's Apprentice was really good, and I think I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned that I finished it, and that I have predictions. I have romantic predictions, even though the age gap is really large. <laughs> between a Sherlock who's like 56 or 57 or something like that and she's 21. I still, there's just something in the story that's making me ship them. So, Warlord Once Forever was good. Ruby Fever was another like five star this month. Year of Yes was pretty up there too, especially nonfiction. The Friend Zone was really good. 99% Mine, Destined for the Grave, Aru Shah in the City of Gold, Book Lovers and Hating Game. Like y'all, I had a lot of five stars. This, how am I gonna pick a favorite? How am I supposed to pick a best book of the month? Like, oh, and then Survive the Streets. Oh my God, because I got to edit that one. I'm still counting it as a read because it's the first time I read it. And I like Timothy, oh my God. And then I had Thirst, which was a reread too, which I also really loved because it's Christopher Pike. <sighs> was there anything that was bad this month? If I have to say the worst one is Night of the Living Dummy by Earl Stein, like seriously, we're in a good place because that is an also another childhood reread. Oh, it's a good month. What am I reading next? What do I have on my thing? I am currently reading this guy, which at first I was just like, why are we learning all this? And then I'm remembering why we're learning all of this. And I'm remembering a bit more about the book as I read. I'm only like 64 pages into this thing. Yes. I, there's one scene that I am just waiting for. There's just one scene I am waiting for. It's gonna be a little while till we get there, but I'm starting to enjoy it a bit more. I also have Starfall, well this is Lander's number two in a series, waiting for me. I have it on my phone and I need to get to reading it. Reading with my eyeballs is so much slower than reading an audiobook. If I can get through this one, I will at least start that one this month. I have tomorrow that I can do with reading this. What else do I, I know I have something else on there. What was it? What? Oh, it was another Abby Jim, Jimena, Jimenez. The Friend Zone, book three, I believe, Life is Too Short, is waiting for me next. So this should be a good time. I should also be talking to you guys about my NaNoWriMo goals, but we will do that probably tomorrow. Should I make my own video? I don't know, but it's probably gonna be tomorrow. Okay, we'll be back with my my goals and a wrap up because I didn't vlog very much this week I don't think very little so yeah but gay books yay reading lots of books I've read a lot of books this month and I am totally excited about it okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna go read this the way I have started my mini little happy planner here this is my reading stuff 2023 is it gonna be goal or other stuff. I decided to, since I didn't have anything to put here, that I would pick quotes from books that I had read that month before. So this will be my October when I get to fill it out. That guy. And then this will be November's. So, yes. Okay. And I love these. I love these things. Look at them. They're so cute. And they match the paper I have to make the binders with, which I'll also be doing tomorrow. I just finished Life is Too Short. Got some tears in my eyeballs. What a sweet story. So she does, she tackles Abby, and I found out Jimenez, I'm sorry for the hard J, tackles a lot of very serious topics that people deal with. And I, I really like that. I like that paired with <laughs> her sense of humor and the banter, like the dialogue, the character connection. She does a really good job, so. Good on you, Abby. Good book, book number three, Friend Zone series. It's a series you should read. It really is. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna, I let that take over yesterday and half of today, and now I gotta go back to work. So, time to go back to work. Hey guys, even though, every time, I'm telling you, every fucking time. Okay, just gonna talk a little louder. So, and even though it's like Monday, I would like to tell you guys before and NaNoWriMo technically starts tomorrow, what my goals are. So I'm tagging this on to the end of the vlog because it's kind of short. So here are my goals. I am not doing a traditional NaNoWriMo, which is 50,000 words. You're supposed to start a new project, all the things. I am too like waist deep <laughs> in other projects to even think about starting a new one right now. I mean, I am thinking about starting a new one, but that's besides the point. Like we're not doing it 
that's the point is we're not doing it. So what I have for goals this month are more editing goals and trying to finish up the project that I'm working on this year. So if I can finish those two projects that I wanted to this year, I'm missing one. I didn't actually get to finish one of my projects. It's fine. Writing as many books as I have here recently, like I'm fine with this. I'm still in the middle of loving them both. I do want to continue writing in it as per normal. I'm aiming for 15,000 words in that and the other stories that I'm writing during it for the month. This is normal, it's not changing. I'm not doing the NaNoWriMo with that. What I am, well, I mean, I'm kind of counting it, but not really. What I am doing is I would like to do 60 minutes a day because again, that just makes me focus on my projects instead of allowing them to fall underneath the weight of all of the other jobs that I have, the other things that I have to do. If I can just make 60 minutes for myself a day to write, that is my goal, or edit uh, for November. And I'm gonna count editing in there. I'm gonna hopefully make it half and half. So half writing, 30 minutes of writing a day, and 30 minutes of editing my reboot story. So that is my goal for NaNoWriMo, is to finish editing my reboot story Honestly, like my steps usually are number one, read through. Read through it, make sure it makes sense. If I need to add anything, I can add stuff. And there we go. And then I go through it with my word list. When I add Grammarly onto it this time, at least the free version of it, and just like kind of peeking through at other highlights that it has, because I've been using that for one of my other freelance jobs, one of my reoccurring freelance jobs that I have. And then I usually read it to my mom into my husband and that's that's my normal way of doing things and then you know formatting all those other things i have been rereading this thing in chunks and sections and like halfway through and then like coming back to it and doing another you know i've just been reading it a lot since i finished writing it where was that april almost november so i haven't really let it rest like i should i have also already read it to my mom i just finished that yesterday reading her the unedited draft because she wanted to know she wanted me to read or something so i read her that i made her cry which is usually a goal of mine so it's got the feels in it that makes me happy interestingly enough i didn't realize how like on point i made the grief until after we lost Danny, and this I find absolutely fucking amazing because I understand it better now and I still feel like I did an okay job with it. So yay for that. Anyways, I'm still gonna start with my reread, start rereading it tomorrow, and then go about the other steps, hopefully fairly quickly. I also need to write a blurb for, I'm calling it not if you looked at me like that. I need to format it at the end. I would like to highlight teasers while I'm going through my read of it because that just makes more sense to me. And then I also, and then that's, that, that's my goal for my reboot story. My writing goals, as I mentioned, 60 minutes a day, I'd like to do something writing related, whether that's editing or writing. I want to draft 15,000 uh, 15, words in whatever projects I'm working on. I always have my 5,000 words in my Lishki short, so I will be doing that as well. And then I need to plot in Themos because I need to write that short story. I'm really hoping, honestly, this month that I can finish Shy and Brad's story and start Riley and Eli's story and then plot in Themos. That would be amazing i have i have had like a good moment this last week after my lunch with betty ann i had the story was continuing in my head afterwards so like i have a place to go which feels really good because usually i sit down and i have no idea what the fuck i'm doing so that feels really really good those are my writing related things i also content wise would like to do like a 10k challenge and a 12 hour challenge and show you guys a little bit more of me making my new planner stuff so those are my goals for November, NaNoWriMo, editing, writing, planning, doing the things, and yeah. Let me know if you're participating in NaNo, if you're doing it traditionally, or if you're being somebody like me who's gonna do it non-traditionally. I did sign up for the 50,000, and I'm just gonna break it down into, I could do it the words edited, or I could break it down in time. I think I'm gonna break it down time-wise, so yeah. Anyways, let me know what you're doing. I'm gonna end the vlog here, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you're doing in general. Are you reading? Are you writing? Are you being creative in other ways? Are you just working a lot? Because I know what that's like. I really know what that's like. Let me know how life is, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!